hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. And the Ford Escort now fully MOT'd, ready for the road. And unfortunately, this will be my last drive in this because I'm going to deliver this to a good friend of mine. Because as mentioned, I already swapped it with something else that fits my garage a bit better than this because this is no longer rusty and is actually working. And my fleet primarily consists of very rusty stuff that doesn't really work. I would like it to stay like that, so I'm gonna get rid of this car. Even though I actually made the trade before this car was even MOT'd, I have to say I hadn't really driven it at that point. And now that I drive it, this feels really modern and really like something else com uh, comparing it to all the other stuff that I drive. It feels expensive. And it's not really, but uh, I think you get the point. This is, it is a proper 90s everyday car. And it's very fun because they pretty much smell all the same. They drive all the same from this era. This could pretty much, it reminds me so much of my Toyota Corolla that I got and also the Avensis? The Avensis, yeah, the Avensis. The smells, the fabric, the feeling of the dashboard, and, and the engine. The engine in this is a 1.6, 90 horsepower twin cam engine. And that was just, the 90s was the era of the twin cam. I know still to this day, the twin cam is a pretty normal engine to have. But in the 90s, it was something that you, you would brag about if you were a car maker. By this time in 96, I think this, no, no, it's a 98 model. If you had an eight valve engine, it was beginning to be a bit too old school, but even this got the 16 V batch on the rear because they were proud of 16 valve in the 90s. And it was an important selling point, that's for sure. But it's funny the setup of these, also the Nissan Primera, for instance, they all drive pretty much the same. They are really easy to drive. You have the pretty much the same seating position um, and the gear change is very similar. Uh, they are kind of like a bit spongy, if that makes sense. It feels like there is a lot of gif in the uh, in the clutch assembly. Uh, it's it's not. It, it's most likely just soft springs in the uh, in the actual clutch plate. But gear changes are very easy in these cars, at least in this one. You don't have to concentrate a lot to make a nice gear change. Comparing it to modern day cars, at least the cheaper ones that I normally drive, C1s and and uh, and the likes, you really have to get the uh, the clutch biting point right, unless you want a jerky kind of gear change. And this one, it doesn't really matter. It just takes it up pretty much. But yeah, the car passed the, M the MOT now with no problems. It is, everything is working fine. Unfortunately, the radio won't turn on. I don't know what that, that is, and I haven't had the time to, to dig into that. It's a bit of a shame because this seems to have a pretty nice speaker set up in it, but uh, it doesn't work. This is the 1.6. You could get a 1.8 and you could get some other bigger engines, but even this 1.6 actually got some get up and go. A thing that you sometimes miss is in in at least the economy boxes from 2005 and onwards. Uh, but you actually, you can actually get it up to speed pretty, pretty quickly, not fast, but it's not, it doesn't feel slow. Now we are at 80. That's, that's pretty nice. So this car has been the odd one out for a while on my channel. I bought it pretty spontaneous. I bought it from the same man that I bought the, uh, the Datsun from and got a lot of spares for my Lada. He asked me if I wanted, I actually asked him if he had any projects that did not have any rust because I needed a break from rust and wanted to do some mechanical work. 
he told me that this was in really good condition. He was right. Um, of course, he didn't guarantee that I wouldn't have to do any rust work. And I also did have to do some rust work, as you know, but it was really not that bad. So I got it pretty cheaply. I didn't really have any plans for it, though, when I bought it, because a part of me maybe thought that I could use it as a winter car. And also I thought maybe I could earn a bit of money. Uh, but I pretty quickly realized that even though it's a rare car, and a lot of you guys actually like to watch the videos about it, it's not a car that's worth a lot because it's it's just too bland and in the middle. I don't think people has yet realized that they are becoming rare. And uh, I don't think a lot of people are trying to make a Ford Escort collection at the moment. But this is one of those very few left in my country that is actually in rather good condition and um, they will be and they will be completely gone in a matter of, of years I think. And then they will be really rare. Of course there is the Cosi version and all those that would be saved. But I don't think a lot of people will have a lot much love for, for 1.6. So, and then I was trying to fix it up for my wife as a in-between car until we found finds another one for her. But then suddenly a good friend of mine had a problem that he hadn't, that all his cars was broken and he had to go s somewhere. And also he had a car that I really liked for sale. I was not willing to pay the price, but uh, asked if he would be interested in a swap. And he was, so we, I swapped this car together with some money for him because the other car is really rough but it is worth a bit more than this so we came to a to a good agreement for both of us i think and then uh, it's going to him now i think he got plans to actually sell it while or drive it of course until the other car he got is back on the road and then he's going to sell it again so if you want this car and live in denmark then keep an eye out because it will be for sale i think I am trying to convince him to, just to keep it because this is going to be a reliable car for the next couple of years at least. But on the mechanical side of things, the car is pretty well. I am losing pressure on the front tires, unfortunately. I hope for the new owner that it that will clear itself but it, because sometimes it just needs to be driven to, to seal again. Uh, but it is losing a bit of pressure over time. Um, other than that, that's a small thing, really. It is a really decent car. Remember, it got 124,000 kilometers on the clock, so it's the engine, at least, is most likely good from a lot of kilometers still. The underneath is in really good condition. The MOT man was quite surprised to see the, the rear. Ch chassis legs are in good condition because they are normally not on this model. So uh, if you could keep the rust at bay, you would have a car for many years in this one, I think. Um, but seeing the rust in that firewall tells me that this car can rot in some really weird places that you might not even think to look at. But it's a nice driving car, I gotta say. No vibrations. The steering wheel is a bit crooked to the left, but it is not pulling to the sides. Um, the brakes are absolutely fine. I've I did re-bleed them another time before going to the MOT, even though they already it was breaking good enough, because it is the biting point is a bit low and I'm it's still low. I don't think there is anything wrong. I had a feeling that maybe there was some air in it. Maybe the rear brake shoes haven't adjusted themselves completely yet. The brakes are absolutely fine. It's just lower than I was expecting. That could be completely normal for the Ford Escort. So, but it's just a bit lower than uh, that I would, would than what I would expect. There is no suspension noise. Uh, one thing though, which is a bit fun. The first thing, my good buddy, who I bought the Casal mopeds from, by the way, um, told me when he saw this is just your weight when you take a drive in this car you will be astonished about the amount of wind noise. <laughs> a really random thing to remember them uh, by, but uh, I, I thought, yeah, maybe. But now that I drive it, and maybe it's because he said that, but now that I drive it, I am constantly focused on a whistling kind of sound coming from 
Yeah, I'm not even sure what's making that sound, but there is a wind noise that is quite annoying, especially when you have noticed it. I don't think I would, would have ever noticed it if he hadn't mentioned that. I would like to see if anyone else remember wind noise in the Ford Escort as being a problem. Uh, please leave a comment below if you if you got experience in that in that regard because it's a fun detail I think. But these cars from the 90s and late 90s is in a bit of a weird place in my mind because they are in between what is really interesting cars from the 80s in my opinion and and the early 90s and then comes the millennium and cars from that area and forward is in my book getting boring and uh, within five or ten years uh, into the new millennium they are really boring in my opinion it is maybe just because of my childhood from the 80s most likely uh, but i don't see a lot of soul and a lot of interesting things in the modern cars it could also just be because I don't, I can't afford the newer cars, I, so it wouldn't be fun. And if I bought a new car, I would use all my money to just buy one, and then I would be scared for uh, to use it. <laughs> so maybe that's also a reason I don't know. But I think these in-betweener cars are growing a lot on me lately because these are the cars that I bought cheaply when I got my driver's license, and uh, they wasn't really regarded as anything special, but they are just workhorses and really well built when ignoring the fact that this is just a rust bucket. Uh, the mechanical sides, it's just, you will know when you're into a 90s, uh, late 90s cars from the fabric, the smell, the gearbox, the engines and all that. It's, it's a very special thing. And I'm beginning to really like those cars. I got a good mate who drives a Nissan Primera, from, uh, also from the middle of the 90s. I can't remember the model name. But that one is also a really, really nice car. And to be honest, you could make a really interesting collection just by buying cars from, uh, from that era. Anyway, I'm getting to my destination, so I'm going to switch off in a minute. Thank you for sticking around with, the, uh, with me on the journey of saving this Ford Escort. I know it's been a bit different. From, from most of the other cars that I have, but still it was worth saving. And I think I have done exactly what I like to do with this car, giving it another chance in life because I think it could very easily have been scrapped, uh, especially if you have noticed that rust before digging into it because of those pretty big tasks, the swapping of the steering rack and of course the cam belt and all that. It's time consuming stuff. It's now done and the car is getting another chance. I hope it will get into the right hands so it will be used and cherished and uh, not spared in any way. I don't think I, I'm not into uh, keeping cars in storages forever. They need to be used. They need to be driven. This is the time of the, uh, of the petrol car and the time is running out. So, so I think it's it's best to just use them and enjoy them. But thank you for watching and see you in the next one where I will most likely introduce what I swapped this car for because it's something very, very different. See you in the next one.